Hi, my name is William Canterbury. I just finished my third year of law school here at Case and I'll be graduating this summer. Welcome to Faculty View at CWRU. I'm here with Professor Juscelino Colares. He teaches civil procedure, international trade law, and international environmental law. He's the only Brazilian-born active tenured law professor in the United States, which is important because we're here to talk about the impeachment controversy surrounding Brazil's president, Dilma Rousseff. Professor Colares, as you are aware, two weeks ago, Brazil's lower house voted to impeach President Dilma Rousseff. What led to this situation? Well, the vote came about after uh, the House, the equivalent to our, in the United States, House Judiciary uh, Committee voted uh, favorably on a report that had detected violations of budgetary law by the President of the Republic violations specifically of Articles 85 and 167 of the Brazilian Constitution that uh, speak specifically to the chief of the executive and forbid him or her from uh, encroaching or uh, from engaging in authorizing expenditures or credits that are unauthorized in uh, the, the appropriations law, the budgetary law, uh, in, the, in this case of Brazil. And uh, those violations were detected. Uh, they were responded to in the report. Uh, there was the right for the president to, and her lawyers to respond to those uh, ma major claims. And it's part of a lengthy report. And uh, once the report was issued, uh, it came to a vote in the full floor of, of the House. And uh, per uh, constitutional requirements, two-thirds majority uh, uh, had to occur to approve the vote, and that majority indeed, you know, uh, supported the supported uh, articles of impeachment, and now she'll be tried by the Senate. That being the case, why um, are President Rousseff and her supporters calling this a coup? Well, they are absolutely entitled to call it uh, anything they want. Uh, in fairness to President Rousseff and her uh, supporters, they're they, they raise an argument which is uh, political, but uh, has a very, a very weak or to none legal basis. The argument is basically that other presidents have done since Brazil returned to democracy in 85. Therefore, President Rousseff's doing it too, you know, uh, 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 authorizing expenditures, uh, supplementary uh, credits uh, that, were, that do not appear in the yearly budgetary law. Uh, is something other presidents have done, so therefore this has got to be political if they were not, you know, if they were not formally charged or for, there, were, there was never a vote on impeachment on them, why should there be on, on a vote on, on, in my situation? So that, that seems to, uh, it's a strategy designed to delegitimize the process, right? At the same time pointing to an apparent uh, uh, you know, injustice, but that injustice doesn't occur because, as far as I know, prior presidents have not uh, engaged in this flagrant uh, 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 an attempt to, uh, one, uh, create these credits, you know, without authorization and hide them, and second, uh, no single opposition before, uh, since uh, Brazil came back to the marks in 85, has actually charge the president with actually having violated that, those provisions. Now there is an opposition that has done that, and uh, the fact that uh, she's, she lost the majority in Congress, you know, through uh, a number of the, the economic crisis, that all conspired to create the political uh, situation, right, that, that's favorable to this type of vote. But uh, I wouldn't say that it is uh, uh, a coup or even a soft coup in any, in any meaningful sense of the word. Further, you did mention that these allegations are politically motivated, and President Rousseff contends that, as you mentioned and alluded to, that these actions have been done before by her predecessors. Um, isn't that a solid basis for claiming that this is a coup? And she, as you are also aware, she was reelected in October. Um, so her term started in January. Um, don't elections also have consequences? Yeah, that's a good question. She was elected in October, in November uh, uh, 2014, and took office for her, for her second term in January of 2015. Uh, your question basically invokes uh, two, uh, I would say, issues. One is, 
respect for uh, elections, and one, the other one would be the unfairness. If other presidents have indeed done this, you know, that would be unfair to, to bring this, this case, uh, this impeachment proceedings against her. On the second one, on, on the unfairness issue, I'm not aware of any prior president since Brazil became a democracy, uh, again, in 1985. Uh, another president has violated these uh, uh, provisions of budgetary law as flagrantly as uh, President Rousseff has. She has avowedly said that she's done this, and her justification is, well, other presidents, uh, or attempted that justification is that other presidents have done this, and so why should I be tried for this? And that goes to the second question, uh, the second issue you raise, which is respect for democratic um, elections, uh, free and open uh, democratic elections, as they were in Brazil. And I would say to that, that the violations that she uh, committed uh, in terms of budgetary law were for approval of expenditures on social programs, a lot of them very well-meaning, a lot of them very good programs, but programs that were nonetheless unauthorized by law, the programs that benefited her politically and that influenced in, the, in her re-election. So in one way, you have the question of whether uh, this is, uh, you know, removing a sitting president, a president that has been rightfully elected, and the, the, that goes to the question of whether she was indeed rightfully elected if she engaged in these manipulations and that she hid those manipulations or try, uh, tried to hide those manipulations and that uh, wasn't success, unsuccessful in doing so and got caught doing them. And how did she perform these actions so flagrantly? Well, uh, Technically, they were not flagrantly, but they were flagrant by anybody who actually looks at government accounts. They were, uh, she would authorize expenditures into uh, programs that had not, that they had received no appropriations by Congress, hence the violations of budgetary law. And uh, by authorizing or causing uh, government banks, regional banks, to fund these programs and only asking Treasury to reimburse them in the beginning of the next month, which meant that expenses that had been uh, properly authorized and appropriated in the budget law would not get funding. And so, uh, of course, some, some Congress persons were not happy about that. And uh, that's, how she, 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 that's how she gets caught. So it is inherently political. It's unavoid unavoidably political. But there are some legal, serious legal violations. And some aspects of, uh, of the violations are easily uh, proven as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, and as a matter of law, of course, the decision will, will ultimately come to the Senate when it actually tries the president. If it, I mean, once it uh, once it receives formally the uh, uh, the referral, which is a vote that's going to take place next week, or this that's taking place this week or early next week at the, at the most. So this is a legal pro uh, process that is, of course, uh, in, you know, surrounded with uh, political issues. But uh, as your question, uh, your prior question proposed itself, it, uh, uh, the fact that, that she's trying to call this a coup actually calls into question of the whole process by which she was reelected. So she was democratically elected, but was that a fair process? And uh, there's also other pending issues in other electoral courts in Brazil uh, on, on that regard. But uh, on the question of impeachment, I think that the, you can only explore the full issues if you look at the, the whole perspective. So this all begs the question, um, where does Brazil go from here? Well, uh, immediately uh, the Senate is, uh, be begun de begins debate this week on, uh, uh, on her impeachment. The first thing the Senate has to do, is charged to do, is to vote for or against the, accepting the referral of, of the Articles of Impeachment. And then uh, once that is done, and that is likely to pass, the media in Brazil reports that there's a, a simple majority is all, all a simple majority is all that is required in media is reporting that that simple majority uh, will be easy uh, to uh, to achieve. The question then is for a final conviction uh, that will require a super majority again, a two thirds majority. But that's for for later. But what happens immediately then uh, following the vote on whether to accept the referral, which is likely to go uh, affirmative, as I just mentioned, is that she will be. Uh, 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 impeded from actually exercising her office for 180 days. And the trial is supposed to occur within these 180 days in the Senate. And then, of course, 
uh, uh, anything can happen at that, at that time. She may resign. Uh, she may, uh, there may be a political, a bigger political deal, and one would question what would be the contours of that deal. But as a matter of certainty, in terms of what the law says, it appears that we're going to have a trial, and the trial is going to last 180 days. And within these 180 days, that should be plenty of time for her to be impeached or not impeached by that supermajority uh, vote I referred to earlier. All right. Thank you for talking with me, Professor. And. Um, was interested in exploring this issue, then I guess we'll see what happens next. Thank you very much.